guys. Welcome to uh, the fourth installment of our series called Purpose. Uh, during the series, we've learned uh, that we do, in fact, have a purpose, all of us. And we've also learned that uh, no one uh, is an accident. Uh, God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make accidents. So uh, we were born with a purpose. We've learned that our purpose is to become more and more like Jesus. And uh, because we know that, we need to become more and more of a servant because that's what Jesus was. He said, I came to serve, not to be served. So the next step, uh, you know, learning those things is not the end. In fact, it's only the beginning because once we realize that we have a purpose, it's going to change how we live our life. Let's look at Ephesians 1.11. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined, predestined according to to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Of his will. Uh, so he's, he's, he's got this plan, and, it's, and everything's going to work out in according to that plan. And the purpose, and that plan is according to his will, the purpose of his will. Uh, knowing that, uh, that we have been chosen by God, knowing that that He's in charge of our life and that He's going to work everything out for His purpose. That's life-changing. And that's how it is when we know our purpose. We don't have to keep feeling uh, like uh, life has nothing for us. Uh, we don't have to keep living life the way we've been living it before we knew that. Um, our lives are going to change when we know that we are uh, that God's going to work everything out according to his will. So, uh, so what do we need to change or what, what about our life? Does it change? Well, <laughs> uh, to put it in one word, everything, it changes everything, but let's, let's dive in a little deeper. First off, it changes our identity when we know why we were created. Let's look at a verse, Colossians 1.16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether the thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. You now this verse tells us who created us and why we were created. And that's uh, uh, that verse right there answers a lot of questions and, and all in one simple way. We were created by God and we were created for God. So we don't have to struggle with our identity anymore. We don't have to, to wonder why we're here or, or what the point of our life is or who we should identify with. The answer is easy. Our identity is found in God. He created us and, and we were created for him. That's our identity. Secondly, uh, it changes our heart because we know we don't have to worry about the future. Uh, let's look at a verse, another verse here. Uh, this is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. It says, "For I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord, "plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future." Uh, I bet you've already spent. A lot of time worrying about your life. Um, we all worry uh, about things, about school, about family, about friends, about our future. But but once we realize that our purpose is found in God and that he has a plan for us, then we don't have to worry anymore. He does have a plan for us and, and not just any plan. It's, it's a plan to prosper us and to give us hope and a future. Just a side note, just to make sure. Uh, a lot of times people take this scripture out of context. Um, and it's very important when you're studying scripture to make sure, you know, look before it and after it and find out uh, what all is going on. And this scripture is actually talking to the Jews, but I think the, the, the principle still applies to us. You know, that he does want us uh, uh, to prosper and he doesn't want us to harm us and and he he uh, he plans uh, to give us a hope and a future. So, but that doesn't mean that we're that every part of our life is going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. You know that uh, there are going to be problems, and that's part of God's plan. I mean, uh, uh, it's it's 
not easy to get stronger when when you when you build strength um the uh, like when you're working out with weights you actually tear down the muscle and that's what makes it stronger and so uh if we went through um life and never had any struggles then we'd be pretty weak uh, <laughs> it reminds me of that story of the football players that um these people really uh, love them, and so they decided they were going to do something special for them. You know, those big heavy weights that they were lifting, they replaced them all with with uh, these things that looked like they were heavy, but they weren't really heavy. They were really like uh, feather light. And so the the team was working out, and they thought they were getting so much stronger until uh, they got out there and played against another team. And then they got crushed because they weren't working out with real weights. And so when we go through uh, tough situations, it makes us stronger. So um, God's got a plan and he's working it out. And uh, and that's what we got to trust in. Uh, and we can uh, not worry about things. We can not worry about our life and, and worry about where it's going if we can just trust that God... Uh, is working that out. He's got a plan, and it's a it's a great plan because <laughs> no matter uh, what, if we've accepted Jesus as our Savior, then that plan ends up in heaven. And the, and as we've learned before, the majority of our life is lived uh, on the other side of our earthly life. You know, uh, this this place here is just temporary. So, uh, yeah, don't worry. Uh, we don't need to worry uh, when, when we know that God's got everything planned out for us. Um, so the third thing, it changes our priorities because we know that this life is not forever. Uh, 1 John 2.17, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And that was just exactly what uh, uh, what we were just talking about is that, you know, this life is temporary, you know, even at its longest um, this life is but a vapor. So, uh, so we need to remember that, uh, you may be going through something difficult right now. And this seems like it's going to be, uh, uh, go on forever, but, uh, at some point you'll get past it. And, uh, at some point, you know, in the future, um, There'll be a time where you don't remember the pain as much anymore, and it goes away. Um, but you were stronger because you went through it. There's many things in this world that uh, that beg for our attention, that distract us, um, things that that we waste time on. Um, you know, we could we could spend our time uh, worrying about feeling left out, uh, or because you know. We're not a part of the most popular crowd at school or or wherever. Uh, we can spend our time worrying about you know the way we look. We can spend our time trying to fit in with everybody else. Um, but that's just a waste of time. God's got a plan. God's working it out. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's don't do that. <laughs> Let's don't waste our time worried about those things. And I, I do too. You know, I'm I'm definitely guilty. I still struggle with, with uh, with those things and worrying about those things and uh, worrying about uh, what people think. Uh, I tell people all the time I'm a recovering people pleaser, but I'm still uh, very guilty of it. Uh, I just want everybody to be happy all the time, and that's impossibility. Uh, I heard a guy say one time. If you think you can make everybody happy, then you think you can do something that God can't do because somebody's praying for rain today and somebody's praying for sunshine. Uh, it's not going to be both. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. I guess it could. But, uh, you know, some somebody's praying for uh, one sports team and somebody's praying for, that the other sports team wins. You know, somebody's going to be disappointed. So uh, people-pleasing is a... Uh, a very bad way to spend your time. So we need to just trust that God's uh, got it all worked out uh, and that our time here is short. Uh, it's just a brief moment um, compared to the uh, eternity that we spend in heaven. And so uh, I think we need to make the most of it. We need to uh, share Christ with others. We need to love others. We need to uh, uh, make the most out of every day. 
um, uh, you know, who cares if we're not part of the popular crowd? So what if our appearance uh, is uh, is not what we think it should be right now? Uh, well, so what if we don't fit in? You know, we should we should know that it really doesn't matter. You know, none of those things need to be our priority because we know that our purpose is found in God. Fulfilling our purpose and becoming more like God needs to be the, our number one priority, not any of those other things. What really matters is that one day we're going to be standing before Jesus and we will spend eternity with him. And none of that stuff that we're worried about right now is going to matter. Uh, what's important is people, us knowing, uh, getting to know uh, God better and and then also sharing that uh, with others, sharing that love with others, uh, being that servant. So the fourth thing it changes is our actions because we know that uh, we should be acting like a servant. Um, let's look at a verse here, First Peter uh, 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And once we realize that that it's our purpose to become a servant and that we were made to serve God and serve others, our actions should change. Not only do our actions change, but also the heart behind it should also change. You know, we can't uh, be getting all upset uh, because things are not going the way we want them to go or because we're having to serve somebody and they're not serving us. I mean, I think that's a lot of times when we get upset it's when we don't feel like we're being served properly or whatever, uh, maybe at a restaurant, maybe whatever. Uh, we're supposed to be the servants. We're supposed to follow Jesus' example and be the servants. Uh, use the gifts that it says there in that verse the gifts that we have received to serve others. So we, we need to figure out uh, how that is. Um, when we learn that, that, that God has given us gifts to use to serve others, then we need to start looking for opportunities to do that, opportunities to use those gifts. We begin uh, to look at every situation, or we need to look at every situation uh, an interaction that we have with people as a chance to serve. So if we know that, you know, we can serve God by serving others, then we should begin to want to serve others. Unlike the rest of the world, you know, our actions should begin to move from selfish to selfless. The fifth thing that changes is our attitude, because we know that, that everything we do should be done in love and obedience to God's command. Let's look at uh, 2 John 1, 6. It says, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. So when we stop to think about all that God has done for us, it's a, it's a little bit overwhelming. You know, we didn't deserve any of it, but that didn't stop him from doing it. None of us deserve his unconditional love, yet he freely gives it to us. The response uh, to that has to be love. But how do we show love to God? Well, the answer is simple. Uh, we show love by obeying his commands. And once we know that, that following God's commands is love, it changes our attitude. No longer are we just doing the right thing because it's the right thing. We're doing the right thing because we love God. God's command is that that we walk in love. And at the end of the, end of the day, our purpose comes back down to love. We were created out of love. We were created to share that love. We were created to love others. We were created to love God. And it's only by loving God that we can fulfill our purpose. And... Uh, you know, when we start uh, doing everything in love, it's going to change our attitude. Knowing that our purpose can change everything uh, about our life. Or knowing that our purpose, uh, or knowing our purpose can change everything about our life. And that's exciting. 
You know, think about the people that you see on a daily basis. Would they, would you say that their lives look like the ones that we've been talking about? Would you describe them as, as people who know where their identity lies? As people who know that, that they don't have to worry about their future? Are their priorities in the right place? Since they know that this life is only temporary. temporary? Do they have the hope and love of God? You know, sadly, I know that the answer that a lot of you, a lot of you would give is no. You know, the people that you interact with... Um, don't know that they don't have that same confidence um, that we can have or that we have uh, in knowing what our purpose is uh, think about how it, it must feel for them to live life and not know their purpose uh, it can make you frustrated it can make you um, you know, feel like you're trying to do everything on your own and that that you're on this uh, journey, this desperate search to find out why you were even created. And knowing that people are, uh, are going through that without Jesus is really sad when you think about it. But it's also an amazing opportunity. All those changes that we talked about tonight, the changes that are that are going to happen in your life and in my life, now that I know and you know what your purpose is, those are going to be pretty obvious. And people are going to notice when it happens. And when people notice those changes, it's an opportunity to get to talk to them about why those changes are happening. You know, we'll get to tell them about how that we know what our purpose is and we know who created us and why we were created. We know what uh, we're supposed to do. And we will get to introduce them to those same amazing changes. And that's a wonderful thing. You know, just because this series is over doesn't mean that um uh, that our journey to live out our purpose is over. It's just really begun. So so keep going. Keep on loving God with all your heart. Keep trying your best to be more and more like him. And keep using your talents to become a servant. Keep fulfilling your purpose. It's going to be a hard journey, but it's well worth it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that uh, you have given us clear evidence uh, clear teaching of what our purpose is. Our purpose is to love others, to love you and, and to love others, to serve you by serving others. So, Lord, I pray that you'll just remind us of that every day as we walk through this life, that you've given us um, abilities and talents and skills, Lord, that that uh, that can serve others and that we need to... Uh, realize that those are not uh, to be self-serving. Those are uh, to show people uh, your love and your grace and mercy. So I pray that you'll just, uh, uh, like I said, remind us, remind us of that daily so that we might be more and more like you as we, as we love you and love others and serve them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. I will see you next week.